Welcome everybody. This is Story Dive. Me and my and my partner here, we are doing this podcast to talk about stories because we love stories. So my name is Logan, uh, and I'm here with my my co-host for the week, uh, Kai. Would you like to introduce yourself? Greetings. I'm Kai. Uh, I also do love stories. We're both lo- loving storytellers, and we we want to be storytellers, and that's yes. kind of why we're doing this. Yes. So. Yeah, I I very much love stories as well, and I've always, it's weird, growing up I never really thought of stories as something that was like important to me. In fact, being a gamer, I would actually not really engage in stories, even, like, it's weird, because there's so many different ways to tell stories, and that's what I've learned over the years, is that there's a certain kind of storytelling that is like for me, and there's so many different ways to do it, and you know, you might think of a story as a book, you might think of it as like a movie or something, but there's like a million different ways. So we're gonna like this podcast, the whole goal here is to delve into stories, what are they? And like, how many different ways can you tell them? And how does changing the medium change what the story is and everything. Uh, Mm -hmm. But for this episode, I will be your host. And I, uh, the topic for today is going to be first stories. Um, and just what are stories, right? So, like, just to I, just to start off, what is a story, Kai? What is a story, indeed? In fact, here, here um, wait, wait, give me your give me your best definition of a story without looking it up. Without looking it up, yes. The best definition I have a st- of a story is a series of events that are portrayed to another individual that give a moral message or maybe just a message in general because not all stories have like a like a specific message in mind that is a really good definition i i think it's better than the actual definition if i'm being honest oh really yeah um so the because you know there are i think multiple definitions but the first one that pulls up when you google it is an account of imaginary or real people and events told for entertainment. Ah, there you go. Yeah. But, okay. But, but, you know, what's crazy is that there's a story here, but like it, you can tell there's a story with, with Kai and his experiences and why his definition is slightly different. You can tell like I don't know, the way you were talking about how like they send a message, right? Cause like it, the definition on Google was talking about entertainment specifically, but like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You were you were meaning it more in a uh, like personal like stories like have meaning kind of a thing. Well, yes, but the meaning it's this an interesting road to go down because the meaning of stories can change based on the individual, but oftentimes the best stories I can think of, I guess maybe we're jumping the gun here, but the best stories that I can think of have an intended message like by the end of the story you can tell what the storyteller was trying to say yes whether or not they said it well you still know what they were trying to say yeah no and i'm totally Um, in line with you but it i mean this is a topic for maybe a bit later but it's like the the big thing is how well can you hide that intent within the story so that the consumer or the the person like interacting with a story doesn't know that they are being told a message. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's why it's been so interesting throughout my life, trying to like, like looking back on things and how those stories were so important to me when, when I was experiencing them uh, at a young age or even like, you know, throughout the past 10 years or whatever, like these stories, I didn't realize that, like the stories were actually unfolding or like, you know, like all the nuances and like someone actually sat there and wrote all of this out and planned it all out, you know, like there's so many different ways to do it. So yeah, like the stories that are kind of done without you knowing, uh, which I don't know if that's the best way to put it, but you know what I mean? It's like the very subtle uh, ones that feel very like natural 
and yeah, 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 yeah. Like, they have a good I think those are the them. most powerful stories. Yes, which is interesting because that definition I read on Google was talking about entertainment as the priority. Whereas I'm like, yes, I do engage in stories tell I, I, stories and storytelling. I engage in that stuff for entertainment on a general level, but most of the time when I watch something or or play something, it's because I want to kind of like learn something about myself. Like I love to engage in stories to like learn something and kind of walk away like with maybe a new perspective or something, you know, like better than I was beforehand. Like I do it as yeah. as, a, as a form of like self improvement, self growth, and like maybe more understanding for other people and everything. Um, so right, right. Which I would say, I don't know if that's entertainment or what, but um, I feel like that's such a uh, shallow way of looking at it. So I feel like your definition knocked it out of the park. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah. Okay, dude, next question, uh, which maybe we already touched on this a little bit, but what do stories mean to you? So stories to me, um, I guess to... hmm. We may have to edit this part out <laughs> so all over the place in my brain. So uh, stories to me are very, I think they're almost essential to exploring the human persona because every person on this planet has feelings and a history and essentially their own personal story to tell, even if their life is filled with absolutely nothing. Like let's say the human person spent nothing, did nothing ever, every single day, they would still have the story to tell of that they did nothing. And what is their <laughs> yeah. experience with that? Uh -huh. What is their feeling with that? Uh -huh. And stories are such a way for humans to connect with each other in a in a like psychological way that I just never see anywhere yes. else with any other kind of living creature. Yes. This kind of going into the scientifics of it, but like offering uh, stories offer experience, perspective, those those messages. But they also offer ways for people to laugh together, to cry together. You know, like a, a good story if with a good like heartfelt death scene will have people crying together that maybe they've never seen eye to eye on anything yes. else but they can mm -hmm. see eye to eye that this character was important to them and they were so sad to see them pass on right yeah yeah so i just feel like storytelling can be like the great connector of divided peoples which yes. is kind of profound in that way but i don't know i well, yeah, and I, I think there's something to be said about the fact that, like, because uh, there's, two, there's two things I have to say about this, which uh, are very interesting. The first thing is that uh, when you are, um, when you're experiencing these stories, you're processing emotions that maybe you wouldn't otherwise, like what you were saying, like, you might bawl your eyes out during a movie or uh, anything, anything else. Uh, story related and like reading a book or anything and that those are emotions you might not be allowing yourself to feel in your actual life you know like when you mm -hmm. when you are watching these these films or experiencing these stories they kind of like allow you to process emotions or experience things that you're probably not letting yourself experience you know like you might bottle up emotions and stuff or but then when you see someone else go through it, I don't know. It's like different. Because the second thing I wanted to touch on was, uh, um, what was it? Dang it, I lost my freaking train of thought. Um, anyways, we, we can move on. I think that was the gist of it. But yeah, just the fact that like um, mm -hmm. when, you, when you read or watch these things, like you're, I don't know, you're, allow, you're allowing yourself to experience something from a different perspective. Um, so like, like putting, putting your, cause you know, think about it. Like when uh, this was actually the other thing I remembered when you, have you ever had those moments where like you can't solve something or you're having this like big problem or something. And as soon as like you go and you talk to somebody about it or you get like their take on it, like it like solves it. Like, 
like you go to someone about, with a problem and like they're able to give you a different perspective and it allows you to like actually fix your problem because maybe you weren't able to see what the problem was or any of that and i feel like these mediums are like stories themselves are allow allowing you to take your yourself outside of yourself like the, you can look at that outside perspective of you through like this uh like external world that was created by someone else and like you can kind of see yourself in these things you know it's kind of like you're able to like go out and like look at you from a different perspective and like i feel like it allows a lot of people to like solve problems in their lives and maybe you know notice things and process things that they wouldn't otherwise anyways that, that was a really long way to explain that but well yeah i get what you're saying because like it's it's like a window into like reflecting yourself how do i react to these situations or how does this how does the events in the story change my perspective on how life is lived maybe by a person that i've just never met or never known or yeah. never mm -hmm. uh considered the perspective that's being told there yeah i i can see what you're talking about yeah it's a it, going back to it's like a channel of connection beyond just simple communication yes yes it absolutely is so yeah that that's great dude what a good what a good answer um okay next question <laughs> Next question. Am I getting points for this? Uh, do you want do you want points? I can give you points. Here, I'll give uh, you I'll give you two gold doubloons. Nice. For your efforts. I've always wanted doubloons. Okay. Okay. Yes. I'll take them. There you go. They're all yours. Okay. Um. Okay. Okay. Next question. All right. This one's. I'm interested to hear this one. Uh, what was the first story that moved you, or like, had an impact on you? That moved me. Or had an impact. Uh, so I guess in this case, describe impact. Like, what is that? Like, well, uh, so moved I, I, as I, in like I cried, or that I walked no, away so with. Like, I guess. A, well, yes. Yeah, so I that would count. But what I mean is, is where you were aware of it, right? Because you could like, uh, you know, my the first video game I ever played, or the first movie I ever watched, like those probably did have an impact on me as a person but I don't remember them. Like I'm, I'm talking about the first time where you in your mind was, you were actually like aware that this story was like affecting you like either emotionally or like you maybe learned something about yourself, but like having that, that okay. thought process yeah. of like, like maybe like your first memory of like this story, like, like you, you're actually noticing the story as a thing. Cause you know, growing up, you don't even know what a story is. Um, right yeah yeah you're just kind of consuming content yeah right? but it could be you're anything just... you know it could even be like okay like your parents telling you a bedtime story like yeah yeah like whatever okay. it was okay i'm trying to think because like on the top of my head my memories like of these things aren't like crisp right. so you know right I, but one of the earliest shot. okay uh i think i have something so the the earliest story that i think like i walked away from it recognizing like oh i was like changed by that experience one of the earliest mm, i guess experiences with that was probably it had to have been like elementary school probably like early early elementary school like maybe kindergarten or something and me and my, for all the listeners, my, I have a twin brother. We do all of our stuff together growing up. Uh, stories to us were just like, that's how we lived our life. Um, and I could go deeper into that at another time. But we were watching, um, oh my gosh, this is kind of a silly memory. <laughs> Dude, I'm ready. Like, I'm ready for it. I, we had to have been in like kindergarten or something. And our uncle, either our uncle or we got it from a library or somehow me and my brother, Keone, uh, we got a hold of Godzilla versus Mecha Godzilla. I have to like, let me think, what, how old is this movie? It was like, I think it was black and white. No way. Uh, was it a VHS it was, it was, tape or? It, it might it have been. 
No, no. Okay, it was in black and white. It was it's it's in color, but it was made in 1974. Godzilla versus Mechagodzilla. Oh my Godzilla. gosh, it's an old movie, right? Yeah, and I'm loving this. Me and Kelly, we had no idea what to you know expect. We knew Godzilla because uh, our dad bought a, like one of the first GameCube games he ever bought mm. for us was a Godzilla game, and it was so cool because you know it was monsters uh, fighting monsters but you also could like take the empire state building and throw it at someone you know and yeah. anyway uh <clears throat> this movie by the end of it mecha godzilla like spoilers for this 70s movie <laughs> uh, <Spoilers. laughs> mecha godzilla uh he like man i was like maybe four or five so i'm trying to pull back from the I've never seen it since but he like a suplex holds like bear hugs Godzilla and like back flops rather like not elegantly into the ocean and like drowns himself but like in doing so all his like servos lock and Mecha Godzilla is just like stuck and that's how he wins is he like he drags Godzilla down to the bottom of the ocean and that's like how he finishes off his opponent but it comes at the sacrifice of himself and like everyone in the movie is crying that Mecha Godzilla, their hero saved them but like by trying and me and Keone, uh as our four year old selves were just bawling just sobbing our mm. eyes out because it was like the first time we ever saw a hero not make it through the story you know in, yeah. in kids cartoons so many times the the uh hero you know almost walks out practically unscathed i mean mm. sometimes they like get hurt or something but we we had never had this experience that the hero could like not make it could die could actually not make it through the story um and we like i guess our mom was napping and we like burst into her room just sobbing she told us later <laughs> that like she thought someone died or like we started a well, fire did someone or did someone die broke well someone Godzilla. did die well because we were just so sad about oh, this man. like I, I mean looking back on it it's like the silliest thing ever but like uh, no to I, a kid's no. mind that was such a formative so when you ask me like what my earliest memories with like a story Outside of just practical entertainment, um, right, but right. like recognizing that there was like a deeper meaning, yes, to the story than yes. just like a simple life lesson that wasn't specifically told to me because, like, kids' cartoons they often, or at least back in the day, you know, He Man would have his big whole episode, and then at the very end, he it would like turn to a screen and he just turned to the audience and he's like, Now remember, kids. Like, lock your wallets in a safe or, you know, lock your cars or look both yeah. ways before crossing the street. And yeah. there was, like, some, like, a lot of obvious life lesson. Entertainment. Like, a lot of, it, like, and that maybe that's something we can delve into later, but a lot of kids shows and kids content, uh, I don't even know if there is a, r a real story there. Because, um, like, yeah, a, a lot of it is just educational. Is. You know, which right. or at you least could make a story out of it, but it's not it's not traditional storytelling at, yeah. at least. But uh, so anyway, the to, to answer your question, that was my big formative that, like the earliest memory I can possibly think of. That is awesome. And you know what's crazy? I I had a very similar experience. Um Really? Great. Really? Yes, and I think I think you're gonna think this is funny because I've been thinking back on on maybe like what my first thing is because you know my my years from like four years old to like nine years old are like all blended together so I'm not entirely sure yeah which for sure happened <laughs> first uh, I do know that like my earliest like shows that I would watch were like Blues Clues I had Blues Clues on a VHS tape yeah oh, uh, of course and I I would, I would watch oh, Blues Clues VHS all the time even. but I, like I don't. Like all of the stuff I would consume, because you know I'd play you know uh, in Nintendo sixty four and arcade NES games and things. Like I, I had all these games that I was playing, but I never once thought about like the narrative of it at all. Um, mm -hmm. Right. But I think uh, so. Going back to Blues Clues, there was 
there was one time where because you know uh steve the main the main host of the show he ends up leaving to go to college um, right yeah and, and part of this makes me wonder why like i was I was so against college for most of my life like maybe it's because steve went to college and i was bitter about <laughs> it <laughs> but uh yeah steve went to college quote unquote and no longer did the show and i remember feeling like distraught with that but that's not the the, yeah. the memory i'm trying to tell you because that may have happened before, which I don't know if that counts or not, but one, my most vivid, like, emotional experience with storytelling as a kid was when I watched King Kong uh, with, my, no way. with my family. <laughs> yeah, see? Isn't this, isn't this crazy? You're watching Godzilla. That's I'm watching so King similar. Kong. And yeah. I just remember I was loving the movie. I, I was, like, so enveloped with it. And when he dies at the end of the movie... Uh, spoiler alert <laughs> for anybody who hasn't yeah, seen King no, Kong. No, spoiler. Um, wait, wait, was this like the original, original King Kong? No, it wasn't black and white. So it was, it was like the one before like Skull Island. So like it came out in like the early 2000s, oh, probably around the same time as like five. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, okay. So wait, or maybe, gotcha. cause that means I would have been around seven. Uh, so. But this, yeah, this one... Yeah, it came out 2005, and before that, the next one was the 30s. So, yeah. Okay, yeah. So, it, it, was, it was that one, and I was in my living room with my parents, and I just remember the credits were, were scrolling, and I could not stop crying for, like, hours. Um, and I think my, my parents were really concerned with me, because... <laughs> I don't know. I think they didn't think I'd get so attached to King Kong, but I was yeah. like, bro, this guy, no. he's just misunderstood, and he's a, such a yeah. good guy. And yet he died for, for like no reason, really. You know, like people, yeah, people were yeah. just afraid of him as a, as a creature. Uh -huh. And I just, you know, I got so sad. So I, I just think it's really funny how we both had experiences with Godzilla and King Kong. Um, yeah, but, like you know. literally the, the like <laughs> yeah. giant creatures of like the eighties, yeah, seventies and eighties. Those, those are the guys who got us right in the heart, you know. The big monster, yeah. monster boys. The big monster people. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, yeah. It's. Yeah. Anyway. But yeah. Um. That that I think that is my first like actual vivid memory. I'm sure there there was others, but that was yeah. awesome because you may you you were probably younger. Uh, in your memory about not that that matters, but um, okay, dude. Uh, the next question uh is. What is your current relationship with stories? So in your like day to day life now, like what is your relationship with stories? And you can even delve into maybe like um like like making your like how you've made your own stories um or yeah. how what you've learned about that and just how you see them differently now. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, well, so, uh, I mean, it, you can keep this in if you want or not, but like as a slightly shameless plug, um, I do, I have, uh, written a lot of stories, a decent portion of them throughout my whole life. Uh, I think it was around middle school, maybe eighth grade that I just kind of realized that like, I, there were so many stories that I loved that I, I loved so deeply uh i was just like enraptured in these stories and at some point i kind of realized like i want to be part of that like somehow the like lenses of like just the story came off maybe i was watching the credits of something sometime one of the times and it just kind of came to my attention that's like man someone made that mm, it, yes. so, someone did that of their own volition, they did that. And I guess another part of me also recognized, like, someone made millions of dollars doing that. Right, <laughs> like, yes. so Someone made a lot of money. Someone made a living, or made, not just a living, but, like, in a lot of cases, as we see now with modern entertainment, I'll get to more of that in a second, people created a legacy. Something that stretches far beyond just them. And like transcends just just that person and is given to more people so uh i guess a relationship with stories now especially as a story creator i have yeah. a lot of like attempted stories and completed stories so as i was mentioning before i i have like several web comics that i've done um 
two of, of them are short stories that are like fully published from start to finish. Um, and I can go more into that at another time. Yes, but I, I think it'd be good to my, go into those in detail in another episode. Yeah. But I, you're like, you know, you can we we can like link these stories. Uh, and yeah, I mean, I feel like I I have any I I think I've experienced most of your the stuff you've made, but maybe I haven't. Uh, so I would love for everyone else listening to go and look at what you've done as well. Please do, please do. Cause I actually have some other, another story coming up. Actually, it'd be kind of a, again, maybe you can edit this out, but in, in the future I do, I am working on another story that actually came from like a dream. Like I had a dream and I woke up and I was like, that story with that dream was in so much detail that it's like, basically an already written story premise That's awesome. and i just have to take it anyway uh it's totally can get into that later because that's actually a really interesting topic um but through all of the creating of the stories i've learned about it it's like it's a developed craft that's my understanding of stories to this day is it's a craft that has developed since the dawn of time and people have been like exploring and expanding on the idea of storytelling in so many ways over so many centuries and yet the best stories that have lasted the longest have the same principles over and over and over again mm. uh, i'm talking about things like character archetypes or the hero's journey yeah, hero's journey mm -hmm. i was gonna mention that the hero's like it it never ever goes away at, at least for stories that make a lasting impression that like years down the line you're not just going to forget that it happened you're like i remember that story uh it the uh anyway so like my relationship with stories these days is like i just want to create i want to tell my own stories yes i do love consuming stories like i still love um like reading books, watching movies, watching anime, TV series. I love going to musicals with my wife. I love going to escape rooms. I love watching dance. Just like consuming stories. Yes, mm -hmm. I love that. Mm -hmm. But more and more so, I feel the urge that I can do that. That I can create just like these people. I can be that next person. So like actually one of my big dreams, and this might be a, like a dream big kind of moment, but I want to explore that through the duration of, of this podcast. Yeah. Is I want to be the next Marvel, the next DC, the next Warner Brothers. And, you know, I, I uh, man, I'm starting so many thoughts that I am not going to be able to finish just in this episode. Which is great because we're gonna have more episodes in the future. But yeah, yeah, um, we're gonna cover as much as we can. It's crazy how broad this topic yeah, is. Uh, right? Yeah, for sure. Um, so I believe that as it stands right now, the entertainment industry is in the middle of a renaissance period. It's kind of like a lot of creators were able to build their legacy and and create stories that are household names to us now marvel dc godzilla uh you know twilight the hunger games um star wars uh, i could keep going on and on but these are like household titles nacho libre for some reason comes to mind <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's it's like a household title. the princess bride these are titles that just like people know or have in their house for the most part i can't speak universally that it's just 100 percent. everyone knows what the story is yeah but at least in 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 the u.s where we are um, in the yeah yeah in the u.s but like uh as it stands all of these stories have been going and the it kind of feels like the current industry um of storytellers don't really know how to tell new stuff and yeah. so it's kind of of like it's up to new creators to kind of like be build a new legacy a new time period of storytelling um and i i want that to be me i want to be a part of that i want to bring others like i've heard so many people tell me like i i have this idea for a story or oh yeah i've been working on a story but or like a couple of people i work with i just met with, with a guy the other day i won't mention my name but he told me he's writing a novel 
I'm like, what? You're writing a novel? That's so cool. And he told me about the idea. Um, I won't tell it here because, again, I don't want to, like, spoil it for him. But it, it was interesting. It was new. It was different. And it was something that I've never thought that like any big company would do because all these yeah. big companies uh, well maybe okay i'm breaking into another topic that we'll cover later but um that's my relationship with stories essentially in a nutshell uh you can uh yeah so if, if, determine that like if you had to boil it down into like two sentences ah just, that's a good thing to do just to future. kind of summarize, <laughs> just to bring it all together, because you were you were saying a lot there. It was all really good. Uh huh. But you know, I, again, like you don't have to keep all of that. But um, I would say my relationship with stories is I've seen and experienced a lot of it, and now it's my turn to kind of give it, Dude. to tell it be a storyteller and not just a story consumer ah so you, you so you you feel like you've consumed enough stories and learned enough about them throughout your life that you feel like you're at the point where you want to inst- create instead of consume like yeah, i mean of yeah. course of course we're always gonna keep consuming stories but like you're at that point where you're like i need to tell my story Yes, actually, yes. I was about to just say that. It's like, I feel like I have a story to tell. Yeah. And, and like, as being real here, we as a human race, and just anyone listening, like, we get it. We've been through some crap. Like, everyone's yeah. been through mm-hmm. stuff. And and that stuff, you can turn it into a story. Yes. And you can tell it to people. And oftentimes, I've found... When you sincerely, sincerely reach out to people and tell them your story, the right people, the people that love and care about you will respond and will say, I have felt that same thing. I know what you're feeling. Yeah. And so the biggest stories in my life that have affected me the most have been the the stories that at some point something happens to the character or they say something and in my mind i say well, i'm that person i yeah. know what they feel mm-hmm. and they know what i feel and then the communities and stuff can come together and they say we all know what it feels like when this happens mm-hmm. and this is why this is my favorite character this is why this is my favorite part or this is why this stands out so much to me mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff and i i just want to be able to provide that I want to be able to tell my story and have people say, I know that. I feel that way. I want to do with that. I want to inspire. Anyway, yeah, I, I'm starting to ramble again. But No, it's good, dude. You're, you're spitting fire, bro. Um, <laughs> I'm spitting everywhere, yeah, dude, man. You, you, get two more, time, you get two more doubloons for that one. Oh, two more, two wow, more wow, doubloons for Kai. Yeah, dude, you're I killing can. it, bro. Um, it's going to become a, a bit, and I'm here for it yeah i mean i i just i really agree with everything you're saying um that's why it's crazy because like like everyone has their story right whether or not they want to believe it like your life like what you said even if someone was in a room forever did nothing like that's still a story uh like everybody has a story and it's 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 their uh decision to like how they want to share it because i feel like i feel like everybody maybe maybe this isn't correct but i feel like everybody at some point like makes something right like creativity like whether it's a whether it's art like actual like drawing or music Uh or film or games now or uh i mean there's so many other ways like that does that's the point of this podcast is to delve into all the different ways but um, no matter what you create, I feel like creativity and storytelling are like connected. Like there's no way to disconnect them. If that makes sense. Like in, in a, in a way, right? Like, of course you can have something that's more story driven where the story is like the forefront of it. But like anything that you make in your life is like a direct, like reflection of like the story that you've like been through, you know? So I don't know. It's, exactly. It's really interesting. If you, and if you look at any piece of media, you know, if you look at like some of the 
most well-known stories like like lord of the rings or it's a wonderful life or whatever it is uh those pieces of media are, are a reflection of the person as a whole like what they've been through what they've experienced like their story is put into that piece of media so it's just very interesting yeah i agree yeah you know like you, uh, you're, you're putting a piece of yourself in what you make and uh yeah it's beautiful you know like i don't know it's, yeah uh, like the way we're talking about it, i'm like bro stories are like the greatest thing ever of all time yeah you know? like <laughs> it's true. i mean like, oh my gosh yeah, but it's also helpful to mention that there's there's such a thing as like bad storytelling or bad stories too sure uh, actually sure. as an experiment like for all, all of the people who are listening ask ai like go into ai like chat gbt or something ask it to tell you a story and it can sometimes come up with stuff, but oftentimes it lacks that creative, like, I, I maybe it hasn't, like, been programmed with the same kind of level of creativity. Yeah. But sometimes it will just give you nonsense. Like, yeah. things will, think events will happen through the story, but by the end of it, you're kind of like, what? Yeah. You know, it's just I... kind of like a series of it's weird missing, events. It's you know? missing the, the heart and the relatability. You know, yeah, which are yeah. like the, I think probably the two most important parts uh, of a story. You know, so right, yeah, that's yeah. It's interesting how how that works. You know, you can't just make a story up. You know, the story the, is I... like real. You know, like that's why that's why these stories are so good. Is because they're they're actually th real things that happened. You know, like even yeah, fi yeah. like fictional stories are a reflection of a true story. You know, like. They are all based the, off true stories. Part, yeah. If you think about it, they're all based off true stories because the, that person's experiences were very real and that's what it's based off of. So, uh -huh. Yeah. Like you are yeah, a true I, story, Kai. Of, so anything you think, make is based off of a true story. <laughs> that is true. That is very true. Um, uh, it makes me wonder, like, what kind of true story came from, like, Superman? Yes. It's yeah. like Superman as a whole is like, you know, as not true as it can really get. Like, like there is not a person in existence, sure. at least not at the moment. Who knows? And or, yeah. well, I mean, I guess he isn't. I don't know. It, I'm gonna like start going on a. I I know I know, and it, it's on a yeah again. It's on a. It's not like one to one, right? But like if you look at Superman and what right. he struggles with, he struggles with maybe fitting in as a kid. Maybe he struggles with. Being abandoned yeah, that's or true. being different or living a uh, losing a, people, losing people, living a double sided life, like having a weakness. Yeah. You know, like all of these things are like, th that's the reason why people like the movie. Cause you, you take all those moments and it's like, I may not be Superman, but I've felt what Superman has felt before, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Kind of crazy. Um, okay, dude. Uh, we are crushing it. Um, the la I, so I only have one more question for you, and this is oh, a, okay. I, this Dang. is a go this is a good one to leave off on because it kind of uh will open up the rest of the podcast, uh, right? So okay. the last question okay. I have is: What medium delivers the best story? Oh, and this what could be this, medium delivers the best. Yeah, so this could be objective, or this could be just your personal. Which one to, like is the best one for you? to experience stories like if you had to pick one medium to experience stories like which one would it be um oh interesting like you could take it any way you want but uh and then i would like i would think it's it's interesting if like we give our answers to this question and then maybe like near the end of the podcast uh later down the line we like give our answers again to this question i think that'd be cool. yeah yeah i agree oh yeah okay so i will actually answer this by also kind of going into what exactly this podcast is going to do. Cause we do have a structure. We do have a plan. Mm -hmm. um, and for the listeners, I really want you to know, and we, we want to be upfront. Like, this is what we're going to be talking about. This is what's going to be happening. Uh, this podcast, we want to be delving into essentially exploring every, not delving, diving 
We want to be diving. Yeah. And doing story diving into everything. Uh, and, and, uh, all of my, uh, I just plugged my title, I think. Okay, so uh, we we have about a year of time that we want to be doing this podcast. Uh, these are going to be released weekly. And every single episode, every single episode, we're going to be exploring either a different medium of stories or we'll be covering a topic about storytelling that, like, needs to be addressed in order for us to kind of get the full experience. We want everything there is, at least within, like, an ethical and legal means. You know, we don't want to, like, delve into something horrible. But... <laughs> but <laughs> Where am I going with this? <laughs> uh, best story uh, medium. Uh... Best story medium. Yes. Okay. Uh, thanks for. <laughs> yeah, you got <laughs> it, bro. Uh, I'm gonna pay you a doubloon for my. Oh, okay. Thank being you. Back on track. Yes. Uh, I'm holding uh -huh. it right now. Okay. Awesome. Uh, so, throughout these episodes, there's only going to be about 52 of them. Um, and all of them will cover that through the different mediums, the different genres, the different like archetypes of characters, all that kind of stuff. And we will be doing what's within our power to get people of these fields, at least in some way, like uh, to kind of be guests on here and and help us understand these experiences to in its fullest form, so that we can determine this question. But to answer it right now, I'm going to answer it opinionatively because I just don't know enough like empirical data to yeah. give an objective what's the best medium. Like, if I'm being honest, like maybe the most popular medium of seeing stories right now is like through the reels, like TikTok and Instagram stuff, mm, which I have my own objective opinion about those things. But it's just one of the most popular, freely accessible easy to consume media that there is um my favorite way at least at my stage of life to consume media or entertainment or stories is most likely through video games or books well maybe not books either video games or movies well not mm. even movies i'm gonna stick with video games we're gonna okay. get with video okay. games here because because it's hard it's a hard choice i it's a hard choice, but at the moment, I'm going to stick with video games only because I have this magical thing called a pause button. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I don't always have time. Like with a movie, it's hard for me to want to pause a movie and and like detach from it and disassociate and then like come back to it somehow at some point. It's hard mm -hmm. for me to do that with a book's Books, I think, are easy, but I just don't identify with books in the same way that I do with video games. Um, yes. But the fact that I can, like, jump into a long narrative and just kind of pause at my own pace and enjoy it at the speed that I happen to be able to enjoy it. Because, like, let's be honest, I, I've, we're, we're 25 to 30-year-old people. We, we just don't always have time to just sit down and read. I, yes. I'm doing all kinds of stuff. I make, we're doing this podcast. I'm writing my own story. I'm making a card game with someone else. And then I'm like, have a job as well and a family. And, you know, th there's so much in it yes. that I just don't always have time to sit down and watch a movie. But I, but I can play a game, you know, for anywhere between 30 to minutes to an hour, even less than that, or however, and I can still get essences of storytelling and like mm -hmm. consume that media just at a pace that I can handle. Yeah, it's true. Uh, I actually didn't think about uh, the games being super consumable because you can, especially in today's era of gaming, you can really just pick up where you left off. You you know, like, yeah. like whether, Man, it's, whether it's the Nintendo Switch or ps5 xbox putting it into sleep mode like it's so easy nowadays to just like play a game for like five ten minutes and put it down um if so. if any listeners of a younger generation than we are which you know many will be right i don't think you understand the importance of a save function or like auto save 
has yeah, like drastically save. changed. <laughs> like, I mean, this is yeah. so completely off topic, but like it used to be if you forgot to save, you could lose upwards of like three to six hours yes. of gameplay. Yeah, I and, I like, uh, I used to be so terrified as a kid whenever my like N64 would freeze or overheat, you know. Uh yeah, yeah. Like I would you lose just don't hours know. Where's and hours it gonna of progress. Speed you back up? Yeah, uh huh. And but it, it, to, to go back to the switch, though, uh, something that's crazy to, to just drive the point home. Uh, you, in order to turn your switch off, you have to hold the power button on the actual switch. If you are if you are sitting on your couch playing a game, and you're you're using a pro controller, like there's literally no way to not put it into sleep mode. Like that's the world we live oh, in. Oh, that's like, interesting. Like you. Yeah. There's no way through the menu. There's no, nothing you can do. You have to actually get up, take the switch out of the dock, and hold that power button if you want to actually turn it all the way off. Um, which is just nuts to me that it's like that is, sli- that sleep nuts. mode has taken over. Like, I, I think my 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 PS4 for like most of its uh, lifetime when I would play on my PS4, I think it was in rest mode like the entire time. I don't think I ever actually turned it off. So, you know, it's just like, wow. it's just crazy how you can just, you can just hold a button and no matter where you are, it doesn't matter if you saved, it doesn't matter if you reached a checkpoint, you can just, yeah. So I, I, I completely see where you're coming from where, uh, so you're saying that you, cause I, the question is what medium delivers the best story, not necessarily oh, which one delivers the best story. Yeah. So I, I think the way you answered it was video games are your favorite favorite story to consume as an adult because you're allowed to take them a little bit at a time which it's pretty much like the the only way for you to consume stories these days is to have an ability to come back to it later so it's just really convenient yeah okay Um, so but let's say you had all the time in the world which medium would you pick for the best experience of a story I would actually say movies, if that were the case. Okay. Um, because they ha- happen, maybe not all modern movies, because like modern movies, modern film entertainment is, uh, this might be a polarizing thing. I don't know. People may agree with this or not. Modern movies to me are like garbage. It's like trash. It's like consuming junk food. Compared well, to and, older you know, stories. I don't think you're referring to every single modern movie. No, no, definitely not. Definitely not. There's there's like diamonds in the rough, as it were. But like generally speaking, modern movies are it's like junk food. There's just not as much craft or like experience put into it. And that's a again another topic for a whole nother time. But I right. would I would probably say Movies can give me some of the most moving experiences I've ever had mm-hmm. in my entire life. Just watching yep. movies. Dude, the freaking sound systems and everything. Like, you know, like the fact that when you go to the movie theater, like that experience of all the lights are off, the sound system is like insane. The screen is massive, right? Like it is it is designed to suck you in, you know. So uh-huh. yeah. Like I wonder, I wonder like if you were to play a video game on that in that same environment, right? Dude, honestly, I wonder I how much stressed. I wonder how much different I'm it would be. So well, yeah, and it depends, right? Because like, if you were to play something like, uh, let's see, like Journey or, uh, oh you yeah, know, maybe a uh, more cinematic game as opposed to like playing Call of Duty multiplayer online. Like, I feel like those are two different things, you know. So mm, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Um, but it just well, makes you wonder, so right? Like, like to... how many game experiences have I played that would have had a bigger impact on me if it was in that setting? You know, I don't know. Mm. Right, right. Uh, on the same, like, I guess in the same vein, I'd like to kind of flip the question and have you answer it as well. Yeah, so that yeah. Towards the end, we can we can answer this. So Maybe you're with all the knowledge we have. So your answer was movies, but as a aspiring busy adult, uh, you prefer video games for convenience, which is completely valid. And honestly, video games are getting to the point where they are like movie level graphics and 
like 4k and everything right, so right. like games are catching up slowly uh slowly but surely and um in terms of just like the graphical and sound and everything that i was talking about but i think my preferred way because as much as i love video games uh most of my favorite stories have not been in video games um there are there are a ton of of examples but my the the stories that have, that have moved me the most have been in anime um so i feel like i feel like anime is my personal answer for my, what that's what i would pick but i do have to say that i think as of right now movies i think have perfected the craft in terms of like that that is one of the best mediums as of right now to like experience a story it's very easy to watch a movie uh and mm. we, we have we have the the tools that we have to watch movies like the theaters and all of the technological stuff in the theaters like we have really perfected that experience so i think right now it's sitting on the throne but i think video games will overtake it and i think video games have way more potential for engaging storytelling because video games are interactive like you actually are being the person in the game and making the decisions um yeah so yeah. I, I think video games have more potential but we're, we're still getting there whereas i think movies have have mastered the craft um so right now movies are probably the best but anime is my favorite which anime is similar right because you know there's anime movies um that show up in theaters right. and it's a very similar medium because it's you're just watching and you know animation dude anime animation has gone nuts these days like ever since it's demon demon slayer came out way. ever since demon slayer came out like the animation just won't stop like going up <laughs> so yeah we're, we're getting some high budget anime which is nuts back in the day it was it was hard to find an anime that like had movie level quality like fights yeah. and and action scenes and everything so uh anime is definitely my favorite i i think all of my favorite stories are anime uh maybe besides a few games so so yeah i hope that i hope that answered the question it's m movies are currently the best games will be the best and anime is my favorite way to consume stories so yeah yeah that, that answers my question and i wonder uh, i wonder if it'll that change down, listeners log it down yeah log it log it down. i mean if, if we're gonna be uploading this so uh it'll be on the internet forever to come back to um but yeah, um, the last question I have for you, Kai, is uh, what are you going to spend your three doubloons on? Uh... My three doubloons? <laughs> um, dude, can I invest that in, like, some audience people? <laughs> can we get... Can I invest you my doubloons? want to bribe our audience? Can I, can I donate them? Bro, don't no, you no, want... no. I don't want to bribe. <laughs> I want to give these as, like... Tokens of value. Oh, like you want to like comments. you want to like reward we go through, people. Like, okay. Yeah, yeah. Like the the best comments we get, the best interactions, they'll get they'll get. I will like I will go through the comments myself and and like assign doubloons. Well, you hear that, guys? The three we have. We only have three. The uh, I gave one yeah, away, right? I yeah. I'm keeping mine. I'm not giving that to nobody. Um, but... Oh well, thank. You, you heard it here first, folks. Uh, there's three balloons uh, that Kai is willing to give to the first three people to comment or like or rate us five stars on whatever we end up putting this podcast on. But I've been Logan, and uh, this has been Kai, and we we love stories, and we're gonna keep diving into them until we're we're bones in the dust, uh, you know, as they say. As graphic as that might seem, there are <laughs> doubloons involved in our balloons. Yes, the story of doubloons <laughs> next time. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, tune in next time. Uh, I don't know what we're going to be diving into, but Kai, will he, he'll be hosting. I'm, I'm passing the story torch yep. to you. So Now, be sure to check out any of our other stuff. I have, uh, there will be links to all of our stuff. Um, I have a social media page, Kai Sheen Art. And Logan has his own, uh, is it just a, a Discord channel or do you have a page as well? Um, I stream on Twitch every now and then. It's been a minute, but I do have a Discord. If you go to my Twitch channel, you can put an exclamation point Discord and find the link to that. 
And uh, me and Kai also made a YouTube channel a couple of years ago called Something Official. <laughs> if you ever want to look oh, that man, up. Man. Uh, but that's a, that's about it for what I've what I've made on the internet. So, um, mm, okay. but it, we've we'll come. More. This we'll is one more. this is one of the things. But yeah, uh, it's been good, Kai. Uh, thanks for joining us, everyone. And the story will continue next time. Take care.